Hi there, I'm Chef Eric Crowley, owner of the Culinary Classroom in Los Angeles, and today we are going to make profiteroles. Let's get started. We are going to need half a cup of milk, half a cup of water, three ounces of unsalted butter, room temperature, sliced is also really good. We're also gonna need one cup of flour, that's all purpose flour, one teaspoon of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Finally, for the last part of the assembly of the dough, we're going to need four, anywhere between four to five eggs. The first thing that we have to make is a very classic dough that the French call pâté choux. We're gonna start off with our water and our milk, get them into a pot, we're gonna bring them up to a boil with our butter. Now, while this is coming up to a boil, we're going to start to get our dry ingredients together. There is one cup of flour called for in the recipe. Really important that the flour be measured properly. Rather than take your one cup measuring cup and actually scoop it into flour, that's gonna wind up giving you the wrong amount of flour. You're gonna take too much flour in for your measurement. The proper way to measure flour in this case, actually in any case when you're measuring it in a flour measuring cup like this, is to take some flour, lightly scoop it into the cup, get it nice and heaping over the top of the cup, then come in with a straight edge, like the back of a knife, and basically just level off the flour, like that. Okay. Gonna put that into a bowl. And I'm gonna add my one teaspoon of sugar and quarter teaspoon of salt. This eventually is gonna wind up getting put into the water, milk, and butter mixture. Stir that together a little bit. While we're waiting for our water, butter, and sugar mixture to come to a boil, we're gonna get our eggs out of the shell. And the reason why I wanna take them out of the shell is because we need to add them in to our dough preparation one at a time, and it's a lot more effective to actually have them out of the shell ready to go rather than to stop every time and crack each egg open up individually. Now our liquid is at a boil, and we're gonna to start to add in our dry ingredients, our flour mixture. Really important that you stir the liquid together very briefly. Make sure that the butter and the milk and the water are blended together. Then we're gonna take our flour mixture and dump it all in at once into the pot. I usually keep the flame on a medium to medium high. Start to stir the dough together. It's gonna to lump up initially. And as you continue to stir it, you'll actually see the flour start to absorb all the liquid and start to form a really nice paste. What we're looking for as far as doneness, this doesn't need to cook for very long. After a few moments, it's gonna wind up rolling around uh, in a ball inside the pot. And when we have that particular consistency, we're ready to take the pot off the heat. Okay. So once the dough starts to absorb all that liquid, you don't see any bits of flour left over in the dough. You can see when I stir it around, it basically starts to form a ball that starts to spin around inside the pot. And the reason why I'm continuing to stir it is because the dough, as you can see from the steam, is very, very hot. And if we start to add the eggs in now, the eggs are gonna cook. And we don't want them to cook just yet. We're gonna cook them when we pop them into the oven. So stirring it around will actually help cool off the dough. The dough doesn't need to be really ice cold, but you definitely wanna have it a lukewarm feel. I typically just use the back of a clean hand and touch the dough. If the dough feels hot against the back of my fingers, I need to cool it off a little bit longer. Dough is definitely cool enough to go. We're gonna wind up taking one egg at a time, and the easiest way to determine that when you wind up having them in the shell is just to pour until an egg yolk goes in. You could even add in two at a time, that's fine. No more than two. If you wind up adding in more than two eggs at a time, you'll find that the dough can't absorb the egg rapidly enough. Stir it all around. The dough is gonna to start to get kind of a curdled look to it. And that's absolutely fine. Keep on stirring it. The dough will wind up absorbing the egg and we're gonna to start to get a really pasty quality. The more eggs that we add in, the shinier the dough is going to be. So this is our pate choux. Really nice, lovely paste quality to it. So now that our dough is prepared, we need to actually get the dough into a uh, pastry bag. Uh, most uh, pastry shops have a disposable pastry bag like this. It's basically a conical piece of plastic that is sealed at the end. We need to cut off this sealed tip and prior to doing that we're actually going to put in a little metal tip that we call a straight tip. It's going to get dropped into the bag. Then I'm going to cut off some of the top of the plastic 
in order to expose the metal tip. Just like that. It's going to take the bag and put it into something conical like a measuring cup or this metal bamery insert. It's going to fold the top of the bag over, and make a little hole on the inside. I'm going to take my pastry dough, my pate choux. So some people often are uh, very comfortable or find the necessity to actually utilize a Ziploc bag for this pastry dough. A Ziploc bag will work out fine. Um, a tip will not fit into the corner of the Ziploc bag, so you can just put the dough into a Ziploc bag and cut off the corner of the bag and make a makeshift pastry bag. Then we wind up taking the bag and bring the cuff back up over the top, pick up the bag, and we start to work the dough towards the corner of the bag or even the corner of the Ziploc bag. I find it's easiest to lay it down on my counter and just go ahead and squeegee it, if, if you will, with your fingertips, get it towards the tip. I'm gonna squeeze with this hand and I'm gonna guide with this hand. Here I have a piece of uh, parchment paper on a baking sheet. I'm gonna take the dough and hold the bag about a half an inch away from the pan and start to give it a nice squeeze until I have about a one and a half to two inch wide circle. Stop squeezing, give the bag a little flick, and then move on over. One of the things you'll also see as I'm lifting up the bag is I'm gonna have a little top of the dough that sticks up. Get your fingertip wet, just go ahead and press down on the dough like that. Then these guys go into the 450 oven for about 10 minutes. And then we lower the heat to 375 and bake it for about 15 minutes more. They should have a really nice golden brown color to them. You can see that they wind up rising beautifully. There's also going to be a large hole on the inside. To fill up our profiteroles with ice cream, which is the classic filling, we're actually going to take this dough and we're going to cut it. I find that a bread knife is going to work best. We're just going to almost make like a little hamburger bun, if you will. We're going to cut off the top. Okay. And you'll see a properly baked pate choux should have a big hole on the inside. Okay. And then the bottom here is going to get a little scoop of ice cream, vanilla or any other flavor that you like. And of course, homemade ice cream is definitely preferred. Top goes back on. You could even take the top and put it slightly ajar and actually top it with a little bit of chocolate ganache, a video of which you can see. Thin it down with a little bit of milk or cream to give it a nice little spreadable consistency. Go ahead and smear a little bit on top like that. Or a lot if you are a big fan of chocolate. You could even do chocolate ice cream on the inside as well. And another one, another topping that we could use is a little powdered sugar. And this is just one of many ways that you can wind up utilizing this particular uh, dough to make profiteroles. The fillings will wind up uh, varying wide, widely uh, depending on the flavor of the ice cream that you choose. You could also top it with uh, a myriad of other items as well. And that is our profiterole. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on other links so you can get other recipes. If you don't see something that interests you, email a request to requests at mahalo.com. Also be sure to subscribe so you can get lots of wonderful additional information. Thanks and I'll see you soon.